One of Nigeria's biggest oil scandals is back in the news. The sale of the OPL 245 oil block has always generated controversies with a former Attorney General of Nigeria, Mohamed Adoke, and a former Minister of Petroleum, Dan Atete, standing trial for alleged corruption alongside two other oil giants. A new revelation in the case is now causing a stir. The campaign group Global Witness in its analysis says the deal cost Nigeria an estimated $6 billion. Back here in Nigeria, a non-governmental organization, Human and Environmental Development Agenda, HEDA, is working with experts in the petroleum industry to dig out more facts on the deal. They held a press conference in Lagos to unveil what they have found out. Adesha Waldushaga has the rest of the story. Spanning some 2,000 square kilometers, the oil prospecting license OPL 245 oil block located in the Niger Delta region of Nigeria, is one of Africa's most oil-promising oil block. However, its sale by the Nigerian government in 2011 has been shrouded in controversy. In 2016, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission filed corruption charges against former Nigerian officials and oil giant ENI and Shell. Both companies are also facing similar trial in Italy. This non-governmental organization is here to cast more spotlight on the deal. President Resources for Development Consulting, Don Hubert, begins the briefing by giving an economic analysis of the deal. I mentioned that Shell had produced this document in 2009, assessing the value of the block. And the first thing we did was we tried to benchmark ourselves against the Shell valuation. It was never going to be a perfect fit because much of the information was not available in this one document. But our benchmarking exercise got us to within 3.5%. So it gives us a very high degree of confidence in the, in the nature of our analysis and in essentially uh, our sense that we, we pretty much understand the concept of the project the same way that Shell did. Let me say before I turn to uh, the description of the current fiscal terms, that we strongly believe that our valuation of OPL245 is, if anything, an underestimate. And we believe that for two reasons. First, the exploration prospects for OPL245 are very good, and the company's documents say this. So we have used the publicly available figure of 560 million barrels of recoverable oil as the base case for our analysis, but we believe that there is a high likelihood that more oil will be found and that the, the block will be richer than we have indicated. If we look at these three different sets of fiscal terms, uh, we see that in the 2003 contract, the government doesn't receive a royalty because the water depth for OPL is too deep. They do receive a production tax um, and they receive a share of profit oil. Under the 2005 terms, a royalty is added, so the government has three sources of revenue, a royalty, production ta or pr petroleum profits tax, and a share of profit oil. And this is the crucial point of my entire presentation, is that under the terms that currently govern Block OPL 245, the government does not receive a share of profit oil. Also speaking at the event, Banabi Piss, manager Global Witness, adds his voice to why the deal must be cancelled. I think what we've shown today is the economic consequences of continuing with this deal. That this deal massively uh, deprives Nigeria of its share from its oil to the tune of four and a half or six billion dollars, depending on which previous contract could have been adopted. Um, there will be consequences. But I sh I'll leave it to my, my colleague, Mr. Saraju, to explain what the government's position in court has been over this deal and whether that lines up with their practice at, at present is up to the government to explain. The chairman of HEDA on Larry Waju Suraj in his analysis gives new discoveries on the OPL 245 deal and why Nigeria should not be bound by the contract agreement. Largely. The new information on OPL 245, based on the post-evaluation analysis by Results for Development Consulting, further shows that the physical terms that emerged from the resolution agreement of 2011 
and the PSA signed between Eni and Shell in 2012 are not consistent with the essence of a normal production sharing system. The PSA is an agreement between two international oil companies, that is Eni and Shell. In another context, this agreement could be called a joint venture agreement or a joint operating agreement between just any and Shell. We therefore maintain that Nigeria could not be bound by OPL 245 contract agreement, considering the new information that has provided further insight into the ripoff. The controversial terms of the OPL 245 compromises Nigeria's potential revenue from the oil block, considering that the contract is hugely at variance with terms on which Shell had been awarded the same license. The corruption cases surrounding the OPL 245 is still ongoing in Nigeria and Italy. In Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari has insisted on the continuation of the trial. The president also rejected Attorney General Abubakar Malami's proposal on how to resolve the impasse. Adeshawa, Odushaga TV 360, Nigeria.